Hello, my name is Jarg and welcome back to the next installment of Jarg Teaches Java. And in the previous installment, I showed you how to use lists, two very specific types of lists that are built into the Java language, not into Bucket itself. The first of which is an array list. It allows you to set up a list of a given type. So in this case, I wanted strings and then you can add items to it. You can insert items within that list. You can display them, as I did in this case, or loop through them in what, for whatever purpose you like. You can remove items from that list, all based on strings in this case, because it was an array list of strings. We then retyped it into integers, whole numbers, and showed you that it works the same way. So long as you don't have quotes around the values when you add them, you can now have numbers in there. I've added one in here to highlight one specific fact, which is that an array list allows you to have duplicates within it. So this is actually an array list of five items, two of which happen to have the same value. The second type of list that we went through was called a hash map. Hash maps allow you to have keys and values associated with them. Now, a hash map is very specific. It allows you to have a key and a single value associated with that key. So with this code here, I don't have four items in my list, I have three, because this last one is overwriting the earlier one. So I have Jarg says hello, and then Jarg has something else. Well, that will overwrite this first item. So it's a list of three items. So it's quite different from the array list, where you can have duplicates, as many as you need. Hash maps can also be retyped. The keys don't have to be strings, they can be numbers. The values don't have to be strings, they can be anything. In fact, the, the keys can almost be anything as well, as it happens. Um, you can even have hash maps of hash maps, if that's what you want. But basically, a hash map is a key value pair. That's what we learned last time. Now we're going to use some of this. Now, in order to use it, I'm going to delete it, which is marvellous. So that's got rid of that, um, because I'm going to replace it with some decent code to start my plugin. All right, so let's make a start on this plugin now. I've got rid of all the code that was there before, which was there just to show the examples of lists. Let's start by deciding what we want to do. The first thing I want to do is whenever a player joins, I want their, I want their currently selected list, which since they've just joined is nothing, to be stored in a, in a map, a hash map. That's what I want to be able to do. So that I, eventually I can end up with something like, so Jarg has, is looking at uh, the test list and uh, someone else is looking at the I don't know fruit list and someone else again I don't know gg one i is looking at the uh, veg list why not like that because each player can only look at one list at a time according to the way that my plugin's going to work so in order to do that that's not an array list that is a hash map now, to set up a hash map, I need it to be static. I only need one instance of this entire hash map throughout the entire plugin. Uh, it's going to be shared between various files as well. I need a hash map that is going to be typed for the keys to be strings, because they're, they're the player's name, and the values to be strings, because they are the name of the list that people want to look at. I'm going to call this selected lists. There it is. Now, on enable looks like a good place to set up this list. So, selected lists equals and make it a new hash map. Again, it's got to be typed to the correct value. So that's this one. Um, and don't need anything in the brackets. That's it. That creates a blank list, blank hash map. Now, the thing with plugins is you don't know whether they're being loaded for the first time or whether the it's being reloaded based on the, the server console already being up and someone's just added the plugin so the whole server isn't coming up it's just um, a reload so you don't know whether there are already players online so this list of selected lists might need to get populated by the list of players who are currently on so in order to do that we need a loop so I'm going to loop through another list for each player p, I'm going to do a get server. That gets the whole server environment with which to work. And within it, it has a method called get online players, like that. So now this list is very like the list, uh, the loop. Sorry, this loop is very like the loop we did when I was looping through the um, the array list because we give it a single name. 
we grab the actual list itself and then we can use it. Um, so for each player that's currently online, I need to add a value to this selected lists map. So I actually can build up that list of players who are there. Now in order to do this, all I need to do is do selected lists dot put. Remember that's how you get something into there. Then I need a key and a value. Well, the value is right. That's null because if I've reloaded the plugin, they aren't the the players aren't looking at an existing list. So null is a good value for that. That means a physical nothing, nothing at all. The value has got to be the player's name. So to get that, I can do p dot and then get name, which grabs the person's name. So the keys are the names and the values are null. And that will do it for every online player. OK, just save that. So at the moment, we've built up this selected list and that's great. Now, the next thing is um, in my... Let me think how I want to do this. I want to do the events next, I think. So to finish hooking this up, remember this is just when they when the plugin gets loaded, if there are already players online, add them to this list. So how do I add new players? Well, in a very similar way actually. I'm scrolling down to find the on player join. We've already got some code there. I'm going to add a little bit more. So this just checks uh, it creates the data file for them, just like my jarg.yml up here. It creates that automatically when the player joins. Now, all I need to do here is I already know they've joined the server. I already know they have a data file. All I need to do is I'm pretty much guaranteed since they've just joined, they're not looking at any particular list already. So all I need to do is do exactly the same basic code that I did earlier, which is to put in my list, I need the player's name. Now, in this case, I don't have uh, like a player variable or anything but I can get to the player using this and I can use this to get their name so I'm just going to borrow that paste it down here so we've got that so that's the key and the null is the value so I've added the player who's just joined into the list remember if the list gets screwed up somehow and it doesn't detect that a player has left the server at the moment I have no code that detects they've left the server um, when they rejoin, this will just overwrite their old value because put overwrites an existing value if there's already one there with the given key. Now, that's fine. So what about quit then? Um, when they leave or quit the server for whatever reason, I want to remove them from this list. It's not mandatory because the way I've just described that uh, hash maps work. But it's just more efficient to remove them from memory if they're not going to be uh, used. So to remove something, we saw how this worked earlier. We used selected lists dot remove. Oops, lowercase. There we are. Uh, and then you give it the, the value to remove or sorry, the key to remove, which in my case is the same basic code as I had earlier. In fact, I think it's still on the clipboard. Let's paste that there. There it is. That's what I want to do. Now, we don't even need to know what the value is we're removing. It's the key that it's interested in. It goes to this list and tries to remove something with this key. Marvellous. That's done the join and quit. Let's save that. We should find that this builds correctly. It's building as we go, um, but sometimes it's good to just refresh that. So at the moment, I should have... Yep, it works fine. But at the moment, I've got no way of actually testing this. Um, because I haven't got any code in my commands. So the next thing I need to do is I need to work on some of these commands. So let's work on the first ones. I'm going back to the on command part of this code and you can see that I've split it up into various sections already. I've got these comments that show what uh, the plugin is supposed to do and I've got this code that does some stuff already. So what does it do? Well, first of all, we make sure it's a player using the command. We make sure it's the my lists command they're using. And then I grab that player's details as a reference to it, because I'm going to need that throughout this entire thing, possibly. So I've got player player equals player sender. So that's grabbing the player. Next, I then load in the player's list file, because each player gets a file of their own with their own lists inside it. This is why this file doesn't need a, a player's name anywhere inside it, because the file name is the name of the player. So it loads up this list of stuff. Now, uh, the way it does this is it creates a file. Well, this doesn't actually create the file on disk. It just sets up a file reference for us later on. We then load the configuration here. So this is actually loading the data in from, that from this file into memory so that I can use it. 
Once it's there, I can try and do one of these commands with it. So let's see, I, I think first of all we'll do this. We'll create a new list. That's uh, what we'll do. Now, in order to do this, mm, let's think about this. In order to do this, I want... So what I want to be able to do is, the first part of this is new list. So in order to add a new list, that means that the user has decided they want to create a new item like this, test C. That's it, that'll do. Now what it'll actually do is it'll create that. You see, lists that have things inside them all start with this dash at the beginning. So this is one list and these are the two items in it. With this, with this, when we add a new list, it hasn't got any items, so the way it actually stores that in the file is like this. Now it's going to handle that automatically, we just need to decide how do we want to tell it to do that. So I'm just going to leave that there, actually, because that's, there's no harm there. So let's do that. Now, in order to create a new list, we actually need to make use of our second item which is an array list. We remember these. These are not as, they're still as structured as the hash map, but they only have a single column of values. Well, that sounds right, because that's what we're going to need here, a single set of values, all of them strings. So, in order to create a new list, we need an empty list. So, array list of strings, let's call it, I don't know, list, that's a good name, and I'll create, call it, uh, actually, do the business of creating it, there it is, that actually creates an empty list, not a null one, which means nothing, no, no value at all, but an empty list, which means we are going to get those square brackets when we write it to the file. And that's what we want. So I've created an empty list. All we need to do then is write it to the file. Well, we've already gone to the trouble of opening the file. There it is. It's this list config thing. If I scroll up a bit, it's uh, this item here. Remember, that's how we're going to access the file from now on. Uh, so, player config, and then we want to uh, put a value into it. Now, there's no put, but there is set. That's what we use here. So then it needs a path in the file, which is actually a string of some sort, and then it needs a value to save. Well, the value it's going to save is list. Oh, list, there we go. No, still can't type. There we are. The actual path depends on how you want to store it in this file. Well, we want my lists, dot lists, and then the name of the actual list that they're saving, just to be a bit organized in the file. So my lists, dot lists, is that right? Can't remember, yes. And then the name that they wanted to give this particular item. Now, args1 is going to have that in it. If you remember how this works, this is the command we're act actually working through. And this is argument zero, so we know that arg0 is going to be new lists and then we know what they're doing, which means this is args1, and we know there is one because we've checked if arg's length is greater than or equal to 2. So if there are two or more of these, there is an arg's1 that we can just use. That's almost it for this. There's one last step, which is if you've changed the actual config file itself, remember we loaded it up here, we need to save it, otherwise it won't be. Uh, now, in order to save it, we, we are going to use playerListConfig.save and it requires a file to be given to it. Well, that's okay because we also have a, a file variable, fi which is this one, a uh, file, player list file. So that goes there, because whenever you're using a config file, it's two parts to it. Now, I think that should be right. Um, I just need to... What have I done wrong here? Oh, I know what I've done wrong here. That should be right, except that because it's a file handling operation that could go wrong, and it's important to know if these things go wrong, it's got to be surrounded with an exception handler, which is one of these things. And we did these before. Now, I'm not going to put anything in the actual exception handler. I'm just going to have it exist. So there we go. So we'll try and save that file sorry, this data, into that file. If it fails, tough. For the moment, tough. You can put your own messages and so on, uh, the output to the console. We saw how to do that in the previous uh, example with system out print line. But that's what we've got going on at the moment. So this should add a new list into the actual file. Now, just to be tidy, I'm also going to send them a message. Remember, we use player send message in order to do this. So uh, we'll have a message that says something like you have created a list called, and then in quotes we'll have the name of the list, which we know is args1, whatever that's going to contain. 
So uh, there we go. That's a tidy message there. You've created a list called whatever they've called it. OK, let's give this a go and see where we are now. So I'm going to build this and it should build OK. And I should be able to then override or overwrite rather the one that's in here. I'm just going to reload that. There's no output here now. I'm going to need to actually get in game and investigate this. So at the moment, my data file looks like this. I think that's still in the right place, so it should be good to go. I'll need to load up Minecraft and uh, then we'll see if it actually works in game. Remember, new lists is just one part of this, but until that works, we can't do any of the rest of our plugin. So this is why we're doing it now. Now I'll just move this down so we can still see our data file there. Uh, oh, it is night time. Oh, well, never mind. Right, so my lists, and then it was new list, and then we give it a name. So, I don't know, um, bacon. That'll do. You have created a list called bacon. Huzzah! And if I click back here, you'll see that it's already added it. Oh! But you can see I've made a mistake. Haha, -ha, right. It's added it in the wrong place. I obviously missed out an S when I wrote that path out. So let's fix that and then we'll fix, uh, we'll rebuild it. There we are. So I've added the S on the end there. This is the value of testing your code um, as you're going. Because if I'd written the rest of it, that would have been very annoying to have hunted out that particular bug at a later date. So if I just paste that in there. I'll do a quick reload on that. There it is. I will uh, delete this bit manually. There we are, and save my data file. I'll then go back into the game and rerun that previous command. You've created a list called bacon. Thank you very much. And there it is. And you can see it's created an empty list, just like it should. In the next part of this, we are going to work on the new items and selecting a list, uh, which is making use of our hash map. But let's do one more. Let's do remove uh, list, because that should be fairly simple, right? It should be basically the same as this one. Let's try it. I'm going to steal all of the code from here and see if we can paste it all in here and just tweak it to just have the parts we want. So how does this work? Well, OK, the first thing I'm going to need to do is at the moment it is grabbing, it's creating this empty list. I'm not going to need an empty list. I'm removing one from an existing list. So how do we do that? Well, basically, by setting it, there is no remove, unfortunately, for the config files. But you can set the same item, which we know is args, args1. We can set it not to list, but to null. Null is that special value that means a physical nothing. Remember, I was very specific to say it was very different from an empty list. Um, then we save the data file and we can update our message. You have removed a list called whatever. There we are. That should do me. Let's try building that. Whilst that's doing, this is an empty list. This is one that's got something in it. Um, a null value would basically be that, and it can't write a null value. So in fact, what it does is it removes the whole line. So we'll see that when I remove test C. So that built correctly. Let's go and copy that in, paste it here. Let's reload that. There it is. And get back to the game. And we will, uh, what do I want to do? I want to, I don't want a new list. I want to try removing a list. So remove list. Then you give it a name. So I'll remove list test C. And it should say you removed list test C. Click back here. And it has indeed gone. I'll try also removing test B, I think, because that's um, one that has some values. And you can see what that, uh, what effect that has. If I get rid of that, it saved the file. Oh, there we are. It's updated back here already. So you can see that it is working. I can add items to this and I can remove lists themselves. So we've already made use of an array list. The next thing is we're going to use array lists to actually add and remove items next. So we'll deal with that next time. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.